It is my pleasure to introduce Verity Price, DTM. Verity Price is someone who believes in chasing your dreams. She's gone from walking 750 miles across Europe in hiking shoes in memory of her parents to performing original songs in high heels in front of stages that are packed in Nashville and New York. From acting in what she admits might be B-level movies, films, with Steven Seagal and Sean Austin to speaking on two TEDx stages. She went from single at 40 to happily married at 43 and became a mother to a beautiful baby boy long after doctors said it was impossible. And then in lockdown, she chased another dream and in 2021 made history as the first speaker from Africa to be crowned world champion of public speaking. With a degree in psychology from the University of Cape Town and an accredited De Bono thinking facilitator, Verity has presented to hundreds of companies over the last 15 years. In 2022, she was invited to be a faculty member of the University of Cape Town's Graduate School of Business, rated the top business school in Africa. Here, she forms part of an executive education department and delivers her content as part of transformational work they do with organizations across the African continent. When it comes to making your dreams a reality, Verity believes you need to act out of the box more than think out of it. And now, all the way from South Africa to help us design our future and think and think ahead of, for the crowd, please welcome Verity Price. Thank you, conference chair. I've chased a lot of dreams in my life, but I have to tell you, not in my wildest dreams did I ever imagine I would be on this stage speaking to this audience in the Bahamas. So am I safe to say there's a lot of dreams in the room today? Yeah? So if you've got big dreams, big hopes, big aspirations, put up your hand, put yes in the chat, put up two hands if they're really big. Okay, thank you. Now when you think about that dream or that goal, put up your other hand. If you ever feel afraid, concerned, what if it doesn't work out? What if I fail? What if something goes wrong? Put up two hands if that fear is really real. Do you know what this means? You're human. Our dreams excite us and they terrify us. But in the 15 years that I've been working with hundreds of companies, tens of thousands of people, helping them to change their thinking so that they can reach their dreams, I've come to see what really makes the difference is if you are asking two questions or giving one answer. Have I got any parents here today? Yes. Some of you don't sound sure. Do you know? Have you got parents here? <laughs> if you didn't say yes, were you a child once? Okay, so you know this. When children learn to speak, what is that irritating question they ask all the time? Mm. And then when they become teenagers, they change it. They add another word. What do they say? Why not? Okay, they start pushing back. I hear you and your rules, and they push back. And so by the time we're adults, until we die, we have a one-word answer. What do we say? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> because... Have you ever said that before? Because I said so. Because those are the rules. Because that's how it's done. Because it's safer that way. And before you know it, because becomes the box. It becomes a reaction to life where we survive, but we don't thrive. Are you here because you want to thrive? Yeah, okay, good. Has anyone ever told you to think outside the box? 
Well, I want you to consider that all you need to think outside of is the because. All the reasons it can't be done. And start asking, why am I doing it this way? Why not do it differently? And consider all the reasons it can be done. Now, you might be wondering, why is Verity so passionate about this? I'm going to tell you. 20 years ago, I was surviving the music industry. I was an aspiring singer and songwriter. I had big dreams. I wanted to tour the world. I wanted to top the charts. I wanted to be interviewed on Oprah. I didn't care what color her couch was. Yes, yes. yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> but two years into my career, the only thing I was touring was the bar at the end of my street. So on top of that, I then discovered it was going to cost me $40,000 to record my first album. That was a big pothole between me and my dream. And my reaction to that problem was to moan. I became one of those people who arrives at a party with their problem, and then they find some poor person, and they spend the whole night telling them how hard and how unfair their life is. Have you ever met someone like this? I hope they are not sitting in your seat. <laughs> Eventually, I realized I either needed to give up or I needed to get creative. Which is the better choice? Get creative, absolutely. So I got on the phone to my older, much wiser sister, Kay. Now, Kay is the bookworm in our family. I asked her if we could have coffee, and she arrived and told me that she'd just finished reading a book called The Six Thinking Hats by Edward de Bono. She was excited to see if she could use his framework for problem solving to solve my problem. Now, I don't have time to take you through his work today, but I want to take you through the thinking we did that day. The first thing we realized was that I was so focused on my problem, I hadn't looked up to focus on a solution. And if you have got obstacles between you and where you want to be, it comes down to, are you asking extraordinary questions? Because extraordinary questions get extraordinary solutions. And so my extraordinary question that day was, how can I market and release an album in South Africa without going into debt? I put my problem into the question. I wanted to give my brain a challenge to solve. Next, we stepped back and looked at the facts of my current reality. What did I know? What did I need to know? Now, I knew that I didn't have $40,000. My bank balance agreed on that. But I also knew that I had 200 songs written. I had a band. I had a website. I had a network of supportive people. Didn't know how you got music into the stores, how you got music on the radio. But that mere act of looking at the facts showed me things I could be doing to move closer to my dream. Next case said to me, Verity, how are you feeling about this? But before I started, she said, uh-uh, uh, name the feeling, don't explain the feeling. Like, okay, well, I'm overwhelmed, frustrated, anxious, irritated, scared, tired. It was a very long list. I'd had a long time to build up some feelings. But the amazing thing is, is when you name a feeling but don't explain it, it just gets it out of your head puts it on the paper, and clears up your mind to keep thinking. Next, she said, Verity, what is working in your career? Now, this was embarrassing. In two years, I hadn't once looked at if anything was working. But when I looked, I found it. I have songs written. I have a band. I have a website. There's less competition in South Africa. And when I focused on the positives, I started feeling more positive. Then she said, OK, let's think how you have been thinking for the last two years. What's not working? This was easy. I don't have the money, and because I don't have the money, if I borrow it, I'm going to go into debt. Does this kind of thinking sound familiar to you? Yes. Yeah? OK. Isn't it interesting how easy it is to look at all the reasons you can't do something? But here's the beauty. If you look at the positives before you look at the problems, it's much easier to then consider possibilities. And so I suddenly looked at everything we'd written down, and I went, hmm, just because I don't have $40,000, it was a problem and a fact, why not leverage off the fact that my songs are written, I have a band, I have a website, and imagine 
Now, you know you are accessing creative thinking when you say things like, imagine, or wouldn't it be amazing if? And I went, imagine if I asked everyone I know to go onto my website and buy copies of my album before I record it. Imagine if I sell something that doesn't exist and the people who buy it replace a record label. Now, Kay was an amazing thinking partner. She said, that's awesome. What else could you do? Because here's the thing with thinking. It is far easier for you to tame a wild idea than it is for you to make a boring idea interesting. <laughs> okay. So I said, all right, this is pretty different. Don't know if it's ever been done before. And I said, well, maybe I can make a difference. And I decided that I would give 10% of everything I raised to split it between women's shelters in South Africa and empowering other artists. Two years, I had been stuck. 30 minutes of thinking differently, and I had a way forward. I was going to sell an album that didn't exist. People were going to replace a record label, and we were going to give 10% to empowering artists and uplifting women. Now, you might be looking at this and going, well, Verity, isn't that just called crowdfunding? And you'd be right. <laughs> but do you know what this idea was called in 2005? Crazy. I left that coffee knowing I would be crazy not to try. And I also left with a choice. Was I going to act on my idea or leave it written on a napkin? Because ideas have no value. Action has value. And if you are prepared to flirt with failure, that's the only time you're ever going to get to dance with success. And so the first action I took was I started telling people about my idea. Two things happened. Everyone in the music industry said, that won't work because that's not how music is funded. Everyone who wasn't in the music industry said, why not? That's crazy. Let's do it. First person who said yes was a guy. His name was Guy, funnily enough. <laughs> we met at a dinner party. He heard I was a singer. He said, do you have an album? I said, no, but I have an idea. And while I was speaking, he reached into his pocket, pulled out his wallet and said, I'll take the first copy. And I kind of looked at him, and I looked at the money, and then I asked the obvious question. Guy, why are you supporting me? You haven't heard me sing. He said, Verity, isn't that the point of your project? Said, yes, give me that money. <laughs> but in that moment, Guy taught me a life-changing lesson, and that is that your word creates your world. The way you speak about your goal, your dream, where you're going, that's what determines who shows up to help you get there. And the more I told people I was selling an album that didn't exist, the more I sold it. So very long story short, over 2,000 people in 25 countries bought that album. I released it in 2008. They sent me pictures, poems, postcards. I even got a proposal from a guy in Edinburgh, but I think he wanted to make more than an album, so I said no. <laughs> As a result of them saying yes to my idea and to my dream, we were able to give over $4,000 to charity. I could buy supplies for the shelters, I could pay for two singers to record their demos, and one of them, Mimi and Tenjua, pictured there in the middle, went on in 2010 to be named Best Young Jazz Artist in South Africa. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> so I'm just gonna address the elephant in the room. You do know that I'm not a famous pop star. You, you <laughs> I'm still open to that interview with Oprah, just saying. But what happened with this project was that I got better known for thinking than I did for singing. I was suddenly being asked to speak all over the world, and I'd say, wow, can I bring my band? And they'd say, no. <laughs> Come teach us how to think ahead of the crowd. Because ultimately, that's what people were interested in. There were documentaries and news articles worldwide. It was one of the first online crowdfunding projects. HSBC Bank in the UK put it at number 25 of their top 100 business ideas. And Cape Town singer Verity even appeared in Carte Blanche, the James Bond novel by Jeffrey Deaver. I don't know if you know what that means. I'm officially South Africa's first Bond girl. <laughs> but the most unexpected thing that happened was when I got sent a picture 
of Edward de Bono, the author of Six Thinking Hats, holding a copy of my album. Oh. Holding proof that I'd acted on the idea. Kay and I met him on his last ever visit to South Africa and he invited us to teach his work. And it changed my life. Now, imagine if I'd never acted on that idea. None of this would have happened. Now, it's not the path my soul or my ego wanted for me. I wanted to be a pop star, but what I've learned is that sometimes when you get onto the road that your soul has planned for you, life gets so much easier. So I wanna circle back to your road, to that dream that you put your hand up about earlier. And I think you'll agree with me that when it comes to chasing your dreams, if you don't design your future, someone or something else is gonna design it for you. And do you want to design your future? Here at home, I hope at home is also saying yes. Do you want to design your future? Yes. yes, okay, let's look at how you do that. Here's the framework. Hold that dream in your heart, and now I want you to look to the horizon of that dream and get very clear on what is your desired outcome. You need to frame this as an extraordinary question. How can I? And then put some stretch in it. This question needs to make your brain a little bit uncomfortable so that it can get creative. When you've got that focus, Step back and look at the facts of your current reality. And then take some time to check in with how you're feeling. But please remember, name the feelings, don't explain the feelings. You're getting this. And then I wanna ask you to spend a lot of time, don't wait two years to look for the positives of what's happening with regards to your dream. Look for the positives, what's working, what's going for you, how can you leverage that to take you forward? And then get very honest about what's in the way. What are the weaknesses, the pitfalls, the potholes, the problems? And then I want you to fill those potholes in with your ideas. It helps to invite the K in your life to help you with this. I find having a thinking partner makes a big difference. But this is where you need to have wild ideas that you can tame rather than boring ideas that you're trying to make interesting. Because when you have that idea and it excites you, it delights you, it ignites a passion in you, that's when you have to act. That's when you have to dare to flirt with failure. That's when you have to let your word create your world. And I'm not gonna tell you it's easy, because it's not. Dreams are things we do when we're awake, not when we're asleep, but when you step out your comfort zone and you see where it can take you, it can be a life-changing journey. So is that a journey that you want to go on to make your dream a reality? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. I see Lisa Nichols is going to be with us all weekend. <laughs> yes, yes. So I want you to really take this forward with you, is that your thinking that you do today is affecting the results you get tomorrow. And every day you have the choice to look at the problems you're facing and think about them differently. So my Toastmasters here, my Toastmasters at home, what I want to ask you, and I just want to get the buy-in from you that you are going to do this. Let's see, I'm switching mics. So we're going to get interesting here. Are you ready to design your future? Are you ready to think ahead of the crowd? Are you ready to get onto the road that your soul has planned for you? Well, to help you on that journey, I'd like to leave you with a soundtrack, something that you can sing while you start walking. And I've lost them. They're going to play it for me very nicely. I've got amazing. My band is at the back of the room. They're going to give us, they are going to give us a song. Would you like a song? Can I finish with a song? This is my invitation to chase your dreams because you'd be crazy not to try. Maybe I'm crazy thinking that this might work. Maybe I'm crazy wanting something that might hurt Maybe it's madness to start something that might end Maybe it's easier to just not begin I may be delusional, believing this stands a chance When so many before have proved that good things don't last Seems a little bit naive to step in any way but I'd be crazy if I didn't take a step around the corner confronting all that I don't know 
The storms I weather, those times of being out of control, not having all the answers. There's never a reason not to try. What if the Wright brothers hadn't believed that they could fly? I hope you get out there. I hope you chase your dreams. You give yourself permission to think ahead of the crowd. And when you get there, please send me a poem, a postcard, and a picture. Thank you, Toastmasters.